Hello, welcome to this video. Lately I've taken an interest in procedural mesh generation, so I'd like to explore that today and hopefully make something pretty epic. But before I can procedurally generate something amazing, I'll have to procedurally generate something simple first of course. And the simplest shape that we can make in 3D is the humble triangle. Look at her, isn't she gorgeous? This also happens to be the most important shape as every mesh you see in 3D is actually made up of loads of little triangles working together. So to create a triangle procedurally, or any mesh for that matter, we first need to define a list of vertex positions. So here I have three coordinates which tell us where the corners of the triangle exist. And then I have another list down here which basically determines which points get used and in what order. So my list has 0, 2, then 1 to draw the triangle and we can generate this and see what happens. And we've got a big bunch of nothing. Sick. Uh, no, but we did actually generate something. It's just facing the wrong way. So this is due to the order that we're using the points. This engine in particular requires triangles to be drawn in a counterclockwise fashion. And you'll notice with our current setup of 0, 2, 1, the triangles are being drawn clockwise. So let's quickly fix that up. And now things are working marvelously. Great, so now that we have a lovely little triangle, let's expand upon this and generate a quad. So a quad is a square and it's just comprised of two triangles. So I'll just need to add one more point to represent its fourth corner. Let's add that now. And lastly, I need to specify the second triangle with three more indices. So I can use two, three, and zero for this one. And there we go. Quad time, baby. Right now though, this is very manual and not at all procedural. So let's try and make a grid and experiment with some fun ways to generate it. So let's start off with a basic grid and we'll start by generating a string of points along the X axis. To do this, we just need to know the total desired width and the total desired points. And then dividing the total width by the total points gets us the space between each point. And then if we just create a bunch of points while adding the spacing offset each time, we should get a line of points along the X axis. So let's test this out and see if it's working. And things seem to be in order. Nice! Now for the Y axis, I just need to repeat our X axis algorithm for however many points we want on the Y axis. And I'll just have to make sure that we add a Y offset each time we repeat it. And now we can test this out and see if it works. So we can see if we can change the width of our grid, uh, how many points on the Y axis and the X axis and everything seems to be looking good. So now that we have all of our points, we need to figure out how to algorithmically generate all the triangles, which can get a bit tricky sometimes. What I decided to do was to treat this similarly to how the points were created. So I started by creating a bunch of quads along the X axis. And as we know, a quad is just two triangles. So I have to find the points to create the first triangle, find the points to create the second triangle, and then just repeat that for however many quads we need. Then I just need to make sure that I am repeating that for however many rows we need on the Y axis and adding that offset each time. And there we have it, a procedural grid. All of this happens within fractions of a second though, so I'll slow down the process and show you how it's actually being generated. So as some funky experimentations for how I generate the points play in the background, I wanted to talk about how I'm planning to kind of wrap this up into a single use case. So basically I've had the strange idea of making a procedural umbrella generator. And if I break it down, I see three main shapes that I'll need to construct to create the umbrella. And those are a cylinder for the stem, half a sphere for the shade, and half a torus for the handle with a little stick coming off the end of it. 
The cylinder seems to be the most simple shape out of these, so I'll tackle that first. The first thing we gotta do is have a look at what actually makes up a cylinder. So we'll find that it's comprised of two discs, which are bridged together with a bunch of quads. We already know how to make quads because we're a bunch of geniuses, so let's have a look at how to construct the disc. I think the easiest way would be to have a single point in the center of the disc and then have a bunch of points bridging it around the outside and then you can connect those outside points to the center which easily creates a bunch of triangles. The point in the center is easy, we can just say its location is zero zero. As for the surrounding points I had to chat to my friend who's a maths teacher to understand how we can calculate this though. So let's take this point along a circle with the radius of 100 and 10 total points. What we need is to figure out its y and its x coordinate. Now you may see where I'm going with this, but now that we have a right angled triangle we can bust out the trigonometry. So if you remember soccer toa from school, you'll know that the cosine of the angle is equal to the side adjacent to the angle over the hypotenuse, or in our case it would be y over the radius. Now if we want to solve for y, we can times both sides by the radius, which leaves us with radius times the cosine of the angle equals y. We know the radius, so we can plug that in, and our angle will just be 360 divided by the number of points times which point we are up to in the iteration. And there we have it, our y value. We can do the same equation for x and just replace the cosine with sine and Bob's your uncle. We have our x coordinate. I always thought math sucked as a kid, but that was actually pretty sweet. To finish off the cylinder, we just need to make two of these discs and connect them up with quads, and that completes our first shape for the umbrella. You'll notice on the edge of our cylinder here, we have a really hard shadow. This is due to me not correctly setting the normals. Though to be honest I had some difficulty getting them to work properly so I'd like to explore mesh normals more in depth but separately. For now though, it's good enough, it's fine, we'll be right. Okay, so we're going to tackle the handle next. The way that I broke down this shape was I saw it as a torus, which is kind of like a donut shape, cut in half and then a cylinder was added to one side of the half. Now a torus may seem like quite a complicated shape to generate, but once we know how to generate a disc it actually becomes quite simple. To generate a torus, all we really need to do is generate a bunch of discs around a circle. So how do we do this? We need to declare a few variables first. These will be the minor radius, which is the radius of the discs along the torus, the minor points, which is the total points of a disc along the torus, the major radius, which is the distance from the center of the torus to the center of a disc along the torus, and then the major points would be the total discs along the torus. Okay, with that done, we can find the x, y, and z coordinates. The z coordinate will be the easiest. This is simply the minor radius times the sine of the minor angle. So this is exactly the same as how we calculated the y value of our disc last time. Nothing new. The x and y are also surprisingly simple. We just need to know how far from the center of the torus the point is, then we can use our trusty trigonometry to calculate the rest. To get this mystery distance, we can just take the major radius, then we can get the rest of that distance by using the same algorithm we used to get our x coordinate of our disc last time, so the minor radius times the cosine of the minor angle. After adding those together, we get the total distance that any point in a disc is from the center of the torus, or in other words, our hypotenuse of the triangle. So now we can do what we know and do this distance times the cosine of the major angle equals x. y is pretty much the same, we just replace cosine with sine and we're finished with our algorithm for the torus. You may have picked up on this already, but the benefit of creating these shapes with an algorithm like this is that we can mess around with these variables that we declared earlier, and this will alter our shape. And having those handles to change your shape is very handy when trying to create variation in something that is procedurally generated. Of course, we only need half the torus. This is an easy fix though, we just need to change the way we calculate our major angle by dividing our major points into 180 instead of 360. 
The rest is pretty straightforward, we just need to create a cylinder on top, connect up the points, and there we go, our second shape. Ooh, it's coming together! Okay, finally up to the last daunting shape, the hemisphere. To calculate this, it's actually quite simple. Just head over to Stack Overflow and copy this dude's algorithm since doing too much trigonometry is not good for your health. But of course, we only need half the sphere so we can crudely find all the points below zero on the Z value and obliterate them from the list. <laughs> I think I must have been working on this for too long and just wanted to make it work, but whatever gets the job done. All right, so now that we have all of our shapes, we can finally put it together and make a little umbrella generator. If we randomize some of the parameters of each of our shapes each time we generate it, so these are things like the length of the handle, or the color of the material, or how many divisions our shade has, for example, we can then sit back and enjoy watching the little algorithms at work generating a bunch of different umbrellas. I'd like to thank you all for watching this video. If you want to watch a video on procedural mesh generation by someone that actually knows what they're doing though, I've linked a video in the description by Freya Holmer, so please check that out. Alright, that's all for this one, I'll see you later.